Hello again. In the last video, we looked at how to build basic GUIs inside of Scala. In uh, this one, we want to add the capability of having menus onto them. So, if we look at the code that we wrote last time, there we go. We see we had an import of Scala Swing. We set a title, contents, uh, the size, and then we centered the window. Um, we noted that there we can only add one thing to the contents. We can also add a menu bar. And just like the contents, there is a single menu bar in the frame. And the type that it needs to be set to is a menu bar. So that's fairly straightforward. What do you put in a menu bar? Well, of course, you put menus in it. So into the menu bar, we can add different menus. Uh, we could add however many we want. In this case, though, I am going to choose to add one new menu. And the text for this menu, well, as all good GUIs have their first menu with the name file in it, I'm going to follow that standard. And what I want to do is, actually, I want to, well, in some ways it might seem like we don't have the ability to do much. After all, we can only put one uh, component inside of our frame. But, turns out that that, along with some menu options, is enough for us to write a, uh, a basic text editor. And so that's exactly what we're going to do. So we have a file menu and we need to add some options to it. So what you can put inside of a menu, there are a number of things. Well, one thing you can put inside of a menu is another menu. So you can put submenus into there. Most of the time, though, what you're going to add are menu items. And so in this case, we are going to create and add into the menu. So notice I'm nesting down in here. This is inside of the menu. A new menu item, capital M back there, and this menu item is going to say open for opening files, and we'll have to put some stuff inside of there for it to do. I will also make a menu item for save. give it something to do and then let's make a menu item for exit and we will have to give it something uh, to do so if we try to run this right now it will pop up our GUI for us, and we have our file menu with open, save, and exit. They don't actually do anything yet uh, because we haven't put that in there, but they are present on the GUI as is our text area. So the next step is to get these to do something. Actually, one other little thing that I would like to do. So in addition to adding submenus and menu items. You can add check menu items, which basically add check boxes into the menu. You can add radio menu items so that you can have radio boxes, put them inside of a group, and that way you only have a, a one selected at any given time. And you can also add separators. And it is fairly common in many menus, so you'll notice in this menu there's a separator between open tab and new pri profile, and another separator after new profile. Uh, to space things out so that, for example, you are far less likely to accidentally hit exit when you meant to hit save. And so we can add that in. We'll just make a new separator in here, and that will add a little bar between the save and the exit uh, to space them out and to make it so you're less likely to select the wrong one. We'll start with exit, since that happens to be the easiest one to write. Um, there are a number of different uh, ways, things that you can set inside of here. Uh, we can go and look in the menu item 
and see the different options that we have. Uh, I have used here the constructor where I just give it a string as the title. There is another one where you can give it something called an action. And in fact, it's probably easiest for us to switch to doing that. Now that doesn't require much of a change. Instead, what I'm going to do here is simply say, add an open parentheses, action and whatnot. The, uh, this works because the action here, uh, we can create it by passing it two separate argument lists. This is a curried, uh, curried method that's being called here. And so the first one is the name for the action and the second one is what should happen. We can come over here, make absolutely certain that this works, and see that we have our separator in there, but nothing really happens at this point still. So what this should do is when you hit exit, it should exit out. There is a method called exit, and you have to pass it an integer for the exit code. Now if you just call exit, you'll actually get a, a warning on that. Uh, the exit method has been moved into an object called sys or into a package called sys uh, for short for system uh, because we're we're making kind of a system call here the standard return values for these zero indicates that everything is fine and it terminated normally something that's not zero indicates that an error occurred if someone hits exit from the exit menu we assume that was a normal exit, and so we'll return zero. And now if we run the program and we do file and exit, you can see that now that actually does something for us. So what should open and save do? Well, I would like for them to call some methods. Let's make a, uh, or to call a function, let's call a function open file, and let's write another function called save file. Now, if I were to run this right now, I'd have problems because I haven't written those. I'm kind of doing a top-down design thing here where now I will write those functions. So what does open file need to do? And what does save file need to do? We'll start with the open file, and that will populate our text area. First, we need to open up. A, a new file, we need to read it in. We know how to read it using uh, scala.io.source uh, and we could then add that into the text area. The text area has a field in it called text and so it's easy enough to, to add that in to set the text on that. Um, there are two challenges. One is we need to know what file to open and the other is that we have to be able to refer to this object inside of here. We'll deal with them in that order. So first, I need to know how to open a file. And to do this, we could pop up a dialog box and have, write our own GUI for doing that. Um, that would be a lot of work. And as you can probably guess, opening files is something that happens a lot. Uh, for that reason, there is actually inside of the Swing library pre-written for us something called a file chooser. And so we're going to create one of these file choosers and then utilize it. So inside of open file, what we will do is make a chooser that is a new file chooser. When we make it like this, uh, it starts in whatever the default directory is for, for the user. You can also pass it a directory using a Java IO file so it opens in a particular place. We're, we're not going to worry about that right now. And inside of the chooser, if you, if we look inside of file chooser, you will see that there are some methods called show open dialog and show save dialog. They are supposed to take the component they open up over and return a value. Well, the, po the component they should open up over if you give it null, it will just open in the middle of the uh, of your window or of your screen. And for now, that works fine for us. So we will do sh uh, chooser dot show open dialog null, and that returns a value telling us what happened. 
So we want to check to see if that is equal to file chooser dot. Uh, the way we can find this out is if we look in the API here, there are some results. So file chooser dot result dot approve. If they do anything other than approve, well, then we actually don't want to uh, do anything. So file chooser dot result dot approve, then we'll do something. Otherwise, we'll do absolutely nothing. So what should happen inside of here? Well, I want to um, make a source equals a scala.io.source. I'm going to use the full name instead of importing here dot from file and I'm going to pass it the choosers selected file. Make sure that we close our source because we're good programmers. And then I need to set the text area to have the text from that source. Well, I can easily make the text from that source by doing source.mk string. Proper capitalization would help. Uh, with no argument, and it just takes the characters and strings them all together and gives us back a long string with the entire contents of the file. The problem is, I can't refer to this text area down here. For one thing, it's declared down here. It's set in the contents inside of the frame. It's inside of these curly braces in a completely different scope. Uh, if I want to be able to access this text area from inside of this function, it needs to have a broader scope. It needs to have a name. It needs to have something I can call it. So what I'm going to do is I am going to create a variable called text area and set it equal to a new text area. And this line becomes text area dot text equals that sets the text areas text. And when I set the contents, I'm going to set it equal to that variable. So now I have access to that. Um, and we can see if that is happy code. Now that was interesting. I don't remember file open. Did I put that in the wrong place? I did indeed. Clearly, oh, I haven't made it so that open has an action yet. So that as, instead, as soon as we created this menu item, it called the open file. Now it will only call it when we do the action, file open. And you can see this brings up a nice dialog box for us. If we go into the directory that we're here, it's I think it's kind of fun to make the program read itself. And so you can see here indeed, we have the ability to make this program read itself. Oh, now look at that. This file goes down, 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 but we can't see it. We'll learn of a way to, uh, to fix that in the near future. We could at this point just make the window bigger and see if we can see the whole thing. Um, but that is a limitation that we have at this point in time. We don't know how to basically add scroll bars onto here. Uh, there is an easy way to do that, and we will learn how to do that in, uh, in two or three lessons. So we have open written, and we can open this. Now all we have to be able to do is save, and we will have a full text editor, assuming you can make your window big enough so that you can see everything. So the save, let's not forget what we did before. Let's give this an action for save. Make it so that save file is called on that action. And we fill in save file. Well, remarkably, save file looks a whole heck of a lot like uh, open file. So we'll copy the six lines from open file and paste them down here. We still want a chooser. But instead of showing an open dialog, now we are going to show a save dialog. 
we only want to do something if they approve it. We're not going to create a source this time. Instead, because we're writing out to file, we are going to create a print writer. And so the print writer we are going to make using new java.io.printwriter. Once again, I'm avoiding using the import simply because I'm only doing this once. And that print writer will wrap around the selected file so that we can write out to it. Um, instead of changing the text, now we want to write the text. pw.print that text, pw.close. We save that, we come over here, we run it, and if we open this file, This comment was added in our own text editor. We can type something into there, and we can do save. Let's not save it under exactly the same file. I'll add underscore b in there. And now if I exit out of this, we can look at that file first off it's there and second it has this comment so as you can see we were able to write a basically a functional text editor uh, with very little effort um, just by popping up a window giving it a menu bar uh, putting some items inside of a single menu and giving them actions inside of here. Um, these actions called some functions and note that we had to give our text area a name and pull it out to a, a broader scope. That's actually something that we'll wind up doing a lot when we have multiple components, especially components that need to act. And so we will learn in the next video how to actually get multiple components into our GUI.